Hey guys, I decided to make a floor for tips and tricks video because floor for is currently considered to be a really good floor for early mid game players and even late game players that make money. Spirit bones and w spirit wings are high in demand and with supply being low, it makes floor for one of the better floors to grind money, especially for lower level players. I know that some of you guys watching this won't watch till the very end, so I made the first tip the most important tip. The second tip will be a normal tip and the third tip is geared towards early mid game players explaining the decoy strat. Timestamps to these tips will be in the description box down below. Now without any further ado, here's the first tip. Well, it isn't really a tip, it is a strat that my team came up with and ran for floor fours. I call it the aim of the day strat because that's my team name. Feel free to call it the aim of the day strat or the agent strat. Let's start with common sense. You need four bow shots to kill Torn and each successful hit ramps up the difficulty significantly. The first two shots increase his flying speed, whereas the third shot not only increases his flying speed, but it also makes him jukes every so often. You can juke back to back to back to back, or you can go quite a while without juking. My team hated taking the last shot because of the jukes, so we came up with a way to deal with the jukes without the use of bone ranks. Every time you la land a successful hit on Torn, he spins around for a few seconds before he starts flying again. And whenever you kill the spirit bear, there is a time limit before the bow on the ground disappears. The same also applies to when you pick it up. There is also a time limit before the bow disappears after you pick it up. My team figured out that both timers are separate and picking up the dropped bow on the last second resets the timer back to zero. That's how we came up with the strat to take the third and fourth shot together. Please keep in mind that this strat requires two people to work and both people need to know this strat for it to work. With that in mind, here's how you take the third and fourth shot together. You first kill the third spirit bear and just leave the bow on the ground. Kill as many mobs as you can and pick up the bow when the fourth spirit bear spawns or when the spirit bow is about to despawn. The bow despawns after 15 seconds and try to pick it up at around 12 seconds if the bear hasn't spawned yet. Make sure the person taking the third bow does not get close to the 4th spirit bear and accidentally picks up the 4th bow. If the person who took the 3rd bow picks up the 4th bow, it only counts as 1 bow and it will ruin the plan. Have the person taking the 3rd bow take the shot first and as soon as the shot hits and Torn is spinning around, the person who took the final bow should take the shot and finish off Torn while Torn is still spinning around dazed. Here is a demonstration of how this works. There was a 3rd spirit bear that died we left the bow on the ground untouched. We kept killing mo normal mobs to spawn the 4th spirit bear as fast as we could. And right as all the sea lanterns lit up, I told Retro to pick up the 3rd bow and yet she moved away from middle since he had the 3rd bow. I killed the 4th spirit bear and he took the first shot since he was the one who picked up the 3rd bow. After he took his shot, I proceeded to take my shot while Torn was still spinning around. That basically concludes the strat that I used to run while doing floor 4 runs. The next tip I have for you guys is blood camping. Unlike the later floors such as floors 5, 6, and 7, there is no bedrock chest if you get an S+. What this means is that you want to grant S runs to maximize your efficiency. I am unsure whether or not getting S+, plus increases your chance for better loot, but if you need to spend an extra 2 minutes or so to get the S+, plus, I would recommend just getting the S run and be done with it. With a good team, you will need a blood camper. A blood camper is someone who camps the blood room and kills the mobs as they spawn while the rest of the team clears the map. Now, why would you need a blood camper? A blood camper could reduce the spawn time for blood room from 2 minutes to only about 60 to 80 seconds depending on how well the blood camper performs. If you can kill the, each blood mob mid-air before they touch the ground, you can reduce the time down significantly. For estrons, you'll need to get about 6 to 8 secrets or crypts and get a check mark on every room. You can choose to get secrets and skip rooms, but that would require a lot of precise calculations, making it not viable for the majority of players. If you get into a team that isn't fast enough to clear the entire map, excluding secrets, before the blood is done, then I would not recommend a blood camper. If for some reason you are a sweaty player that's watching this floor 4 tips video, this also applies to the lady floors. If your team is fast enough to clear the entire map with enough secrets to get S+, plus by the time blood is done, I would recommend getting a blood camper but with a slight twist. Instead of camping blood from the moment blood is open, I'd recommend the blood camper clear all secrets in the room before blood 
Dan Campblood. This will help you cut down time by quite a lot and it will help you out if you aren't already doing this. Just a little insight into my dungeon's life. I was my team's blood camper back when I grinded floor 4 day in and night out. I learned half the secrets of floor 3, camped blood for 2000 plus floor 4 runs, and learned all secrets when floor 5 came out, because S plus runs were useless before floor 5 came out. Here is a comparison between the watcher spawn time with blood camping and without. I opened both blood doors at 50 seconds, and the watcher says that will be enough for now when the watcher spawns its last mob. The third and last tip I can give you guys for floor 4 is a tip that pretty much everyone should already know. This tip is meant for early mid game players. But if you didn't already know, I'll just put it here. It's the decoy strat. I mentioned in my mage video that running 3 quarters zombie soldier with dark goggles with a dreadlord sword is sufficient to grind floor 4s and that is true. You won't be doing a lot of damage and your teammates might not like you for having such a cheap setup but it is barely enough to do floor 4s. It is the absolute minimum to grind floor 4s. You might die during the dungeon run every so often but you do need to realize that it is the cheapest possible setup if you want to do floor force. It isn't enough to grant floor force solo or duo runs, but with a 5 man team, it is definitely possible. A 5 man team with the same setup can clear floor force, though it'll take at least 10 to 20 minutes probably. But if you're grinding with this setup, you definitely need to use the decoy strat. What you basically do for the decoy strat is simple. As soon as you spawn into the boss room, you AOTE to the platform and place down a decoy. The reason why you want the decoy is so you can stand on the platform without being targeted by the bats that spawn. Instead of targeting you, the bats will target the decoy instead. Just make sure to stay close to the decoy, otherwise the bats will target you. And initially the bats will target you, but then they will move on to the decoy. So you might take some damage initially, but just make sure to stand a bit further behind the decoy. And after that's done, the initial preparation is over. Just stand up on this platform and sh rain down with your Dreadlord Sword, Bonds of Staff, Frozen Scythe, or Spirit Scepter, preferably Spirit Scepter. If you have a Spirit Scepter, you can definitely grind without being up here. You can go down, which is definitely better. It's faster. But if you're the only one with a Spirit Scepter and everyone else is low level are low level players, then I would highly recommend standing on this platform instead. One thing I would like to mention is that you need to break line of sight when the spirit bear spawns if you are doing using the decoy shot. What does breaking line of sight mean? If you are on this platform using the decoy shot, when the spirit bear spawns, the bear will stay in the middle and shoot you guys. Breaking line of sight means to stand behind a pillar or an object so that the bear can't see you. What this does is that it forces the spirit bear to move closer and this enables you to hit the bear with ease, making life easier. Well, that's my final tip. And we are closing in on the end of the video. Before we end off, I would like to apologize for the lengthy video. Sorry this video was super long with only 3 tips. I took too long explaining, but I hope my detailed explanation helped you guys understand it easier. Anyways, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you all later.